Hi everybody, uh, this is Johnny from Copperbot Shots doing, I guess, a post unboxing. I've kind of been messing around with this guy for a little while. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is the new Cheetor figure that's part of the red line, uh, which is Hasbro's non-transforming Transformers line, kind of in line with their Marvel Legends, the G.I. Joe Classified, and the Black Series stuff. Um, this guy comes with some pretty awesome box art here. I, I just would like to say, for the record, that looks fantastic. That's the kind of thing I want to see on some merchandise. I would wear that on a t-shirt in a heartbeat. Um, at any rate, RED is an acronym for those of you who haven't been following along. This is the Robot Enhanced Design Line. Um, these again are focused on a little bit more theatrical appearance. They're designed to have a little bit more drama to their robot mode, a little bit more accuracy, a little bit more detail put into that. Since they aren't covered in hinges and weird panels and clips that'll break, um, like <coughs> Kingdom Cheetor's figure with that wonderful one that goes on the back of his head at his chest. Um, these figures are really neat. If you've messed around with any of Hasbro's other figure offerings that are out right now, again, like I said, that other kind of 112 line they've been pushing, um, this is going to be right in sync with it. He doesn't have the butterfly joints in the shoulder, but pretty much everything else is there. There's a little bit of an ab crunch. He's got rotations here built into the hips, uh, the double knee joints. He's got side-to-side -side motion on the ankles as well as forward and backward, which is great. Gives you a little bit more in the way of posability options. Um, but the big claim to fame with this one, honestly, is the stuff that it comes with. You know, these lines, they make up for the fact that they don't transform by adding in a bunch of extra stuff in the box. Um, for example... These are his claws slash jazz hands. Uh, there are a few other hands included with it. There are fists if you want to make him throw some punches or do the petulant Arthur pose. Either of those is totally fine. Um, he does also come with some slightly clenched fists that are designed for holding items, which is really nice. Um, he does come with a gun that sort of replaces his gut gun design from the show. Uh, but one of the things I was really excited about with this, especially given the way that everything scales with all the other lines is the interchangeability factor of accessories like for example this is Flint's shotgun from the G.I. Joe classified line I'm sorry this gun is badass <laughs> this thing looks incredible but it's not the kind of thing that any of the other kingdom figures can really hold and it's not the kind of thing that any of the studio series stuff can hold but because it uses those same universal hand sizes that all of the other lines do you can realistically set him up with these guns or any of the guns from any of the other lines that you like. Um, really anything that'll fit in any other character's hand from the X-Men line or the Marvel line, um, you know, the Star Wars stuff, the G.I. Joe stuff. Um, this should all be more or less interchangeable, which is really neat and an aspect I think a lot of people overlooked with this line. Um, just being able to do something that's a little bit different like that. You know, everybody's toy box growing up was kind of a mishmash of brands. You didn't have anybody that just collected the one line. So being able to finally take your Star Wars stuff and your G.I. Joe stuff and all of your favorite superhero characters from the Marvel line and your Transformers and finally put them all together on the same platform is really cool. Especially since you get to use some of those rockin' designs for weapons and things like that that come from other design universes. I mean, I really like Cheetor's gun design and for the one that he comes packaged with, which again is this one right here. Excited that the copper on it is not the same as the muted plastic copper that he has for the metallic parts in his arms. It's the same painted finish that you see on the the thighs, the head, the little accents on the, the shoulders slash back um, legs on his back. So it makes it pop a little bit more. Um, it does do away with the intestines and stuff like that in the design, which is kind of a bummer, but not a deal breaker for me. Um, that piece looks really nice with this too. Let me just pop this other gun out of here. You know, the elbows, the wrists, the shoulders all have a nice weight resistance to them, which is great because that means that you're not going to have your arms flopping down after you've got this guy buried in the middle of your display shelf. Um, that is kind of the big deal with these. They're sort of made more for display purposes and for creating scenes with. And I guess, like I said in an earlier application, you know, just kind of creating drama with. It's not just, oh, well, this guy's, you know... The same problem that we had with all the G1 guys, where, oh, you rotate his shoulders out, you fold his feet down, and boom. Now he's not a car, he's a robot. You know, it's it's created to kind of give you that same level of, 
humanizing design, which I think is really neat overall. Um, some of the other stuff that comes included with this guy, you have a few blast effects. This kind of big chungus one here has this sort of not quite translucent, but almost waxy looking plastic to it, which is nice because it means light will pass through it if you get it a little bit behind it. Um, but it has enough opacity to it that it'll kind of stand on its own merits, which is nice. The plug on this almost looks like a mini con port in the end. Um, it is set up to plug in, obviously, to the end of the red uh, red guns. If you happen to have other figures open that have that same kind of port to it, fantastic. That looks a little bit more like an overcharge for me. That's probably kind of an oops when you're shooting. Um, the other one that I have that came in the box, mine, unfortunately, has a little bit of a curve to it. So we are, you know, just going to pretend that he's actually the guy that's trying out in Wanted. Um, if you really want to finish acting out that movie, you can get the Angelina Jolie figure from the Eternals line. And you should be able to find a Star-Lord somewhere to hit in the face with a keyboard. Not a bad way to be. Um, again, same, same port on that, so you should be able to plug it in the exact same way if you wanted to. But the real star out of that whole set of accessories is far and above the Energon crystal. And let me see if I can get his hand flat to do this. I already screwed this up once. Uh, ba bam Stay. The Energon crystal has a little bit more of an almost like a prime design to it. It's very organic looking. It's very shard looking. Um, it's purple, so it's got that dark Energon kind of twist to it. And all the, the Energon that you see in the Beast Wars show is primarily blue and translucent blue with that scaly sort of electric look to it. But this is, is nice. You know, it looks organic. And I'm hoping it, down the road we see maybe more of these. Hopefully we see one that's got some brown rock to it, which is what the predominant... Uh, terrain was in Beast Wars with some blue crystals. So maybe in future Beast Wars releases we'll see more of that. Maybe we'll just see more of these in the purple popping up in other sets. Hopefully some prime designs, things like that. But this does have a flat enough base to it that if you set it right in his hand... Come on, don't sham wowie. Yeah! First try! Uh, he can hold this. And I think, again, the sculpting on it is really sharp. And this is kind of the piece that people sort of don't pay attention to with the red line. There's a potential for a lot of really great accessory swaps from figure to figure. Like, this could easily be thrown in, you know, in Destro's hands, running away from G.I. Joe characters and stuff like that. This could easily slide into a Black Series display. Now, it's very Transformers-oriented if you know what it is, but it's also something that is universal enough in its design that you could probably get away with sliding it anywhere, which is really cool. Um, again, this guy's got a great range of posability in mean, the shoulders. It's got some great rotation here overall. The elbows are not super tight at the point where they have to click-clack as you move them, but they do hold their positions really well. Um, all of the wrists look like they have kind of an in-out motion as opposed to an up-down. not going to do that on camera. You guys don't need a new gift from me. Um, but that being said, you know, you've got a few different hand options, so you can create some different stories with it. You know, the legs have plenty of twists and turns in all the right spots, and they aren't hindered by extra panels or pieces that need to fit into each other. It's, it's legs. I mean, it... It does what it needs to do. It's set up so that way, you know, you can focus on doing neat stuff. You can focus on creating drama. You can focus on creating displays. You can really set it up so that way it feels like you're doing something completely and totally new for yourself. Something that you really haven't been able to do with really any of the other Cheetor figures. And even the Masterpiece stuff, you can't always get away with the poses that you're looking for. But this guy's got enough spots where you can really do, no pun intended, uh, where you can really get him any which way you want. And I think overall this is going to look really nice, especially sliding in as a substitute for maybe people who didn't get the Masterpiece one. But that being said, I mean, I'm, I'm happy I took this guy out of the box. I have limited experience so far with the Red Line. I absolutely love the Optimus Prime that they did for the G1. Um, I madly in love with the Coronation Starscream one that I've already picked up. Um, that's been integrated into my Studio Series 86 display immediately. It looks sharp with everybody else. Um, but this is my first really outside of the G1 experiences. You know, I, I do have the Prime version of RC in a box, still on my inventory shelf, unopened. If anybody's looking for that one, feel free to drop me a DM. Um, but I like this. 
know, I've been kind of venturing out into some of the other lines over the course of the last couple of months. You know, I've got a few of the Black Series figures, not a lot. Even the Lightning Collection stuff through the Power Rangers, you know, just having something that universalizes your toy box is really nice and you know being able to have those matchups that you never thought of as a kid the stuff that you have to normally wait until it pops up in like a mugen game or something along those lines um it's just a different experience you know am i bummed it doesn't turn into a cat yes did i buy it because i wanted it to turn into a cat no i bought it because it's the character and i thought it would look cool and so far, he has yet to disappoint. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on, on the red line, I guess. That's kind of my thoughts on Red Cheetor. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm definitely going to get lambasted on criticisms, I'm sure, from various things that I've done wrong on this. But bear with me. This is the first time I've done any of this stuff um, on video. If you liked it, definitely please share it. Please let me know. Um, it's something I've been kind of dabbling with maybe doing, possibly trying to get into some video content for a little while. Uh, but I also hate the sound of my own voice, so keep that in mind. Um, again, thank you so much for tagging along. This is Johnny from Copperbot Shots, wrapping up his review of the Red Cheetor figure. Uh, thank you again, have a great night, and hopefully I'll be talking with you soon.